Ugh, no wonder it made the burning smell. Today, we're looking at this bathroom exhaust fan. It's got a light, the fan itself, and a heater that needs some help. Time for a refresh. The switch for the heater isn't doing too well either. First, find the breaker and cut off power for extra safety. Thankfully, there's labels. Then, become tall. The cover for the light has a tab on each side. Squeeze and pull to remove. Unscrew the light bulb and put it somewhere safe. There are many models of fan out there, but this procedure will apply to just about all of them with slight variations. There is a 3 8 inch bolt and a stud with a quarter inch nut holding the light reflector, which in turn holds the rest of the faceplate to the ceiling. Before removing the fasteners completely, I feel around the perimeter to make sure the faceplate isn't stuck to the ceiling. The 3 8 bolt needs a nut driver at first, but the quarter inch nut is finger tight. I keep pressure on the reflector so the whole faceplate doesn't come crashing down on me. Lower the reflector down, then get the faceplate out of the way. The socket is still plugged in so the reflector hangs from its cord. Supplemental light time. And a hit with the vacuum to get some dust out of the way. The light and fan plug into sockets in the chassis. Sockets are stiff, so the light one unclips rather than unplugging and takes some work to get separated. The fan one behaves a little better and the light one pops right back in. The heater plug socket is up on the side, conveniently colored orange, but inconveniently placed. It also misbehaved. Tripod and step stool and toilet were competing for space, so I wrestled the plug apart off camera. Now time to get the modules out. A single quarter inch screw and some tabs hold the fan in place. It rotates down and away, then the tabs slide out. Two flathead screws, hooks, and a clip hold the heater. The screws have key slots, but I expected a battle, so I took them out completely. Heater also rotates down and away like the fan, then unhooks. With all the pieces outside where I have room to work, I vacuum the loose dust to start with. Faceplate and bulb cover go off to the side for now. Everything gets a quick wipe with a damp cloth. You lucky viewers get to watch this at warp speed. Drop a like and comment, hit the subscribe button, and ding the bell. Social media links down below if you want to come chat. Moving on, two quarter inch nuts hold the fan motor to its frame. Taking it off improves access to the fan wheel. The cloth does a lot of good, but to get in there, I should maybe take the fan wheel off. It's a press fit hub, but I'm concerned about brittle plastic, so I opt for leaving it together and dealing with it. A detailing brush and 10 to 1 diluted all-purpose cleaner cut through the grime. I'm using Purple Power, but any commonly available degreaser will work well. Diluting provides plenty of water to suspend the loosened dirt and makes rinsing much easier. Don't let the liquid dry or it will deposit the dirt right back and you will have to start over. Stubborn deposits may need more than one application. This will take some elbow grease. The fan wheels accumulate a lot of dirt, especially dealing with humid air. Missing a spot will result in balance issues, so once cleaning begins, I'm committed. Water in a spray bottle serves as a rinse without saturating the motor. The old adage that water and electricity don't mix is somewhat true, but when de-energized, a little overspray won't hurt these parts at all, and they will be completely dry by the time I reassemble. Frame just needs a wipe with a damp cloth. The heater has a metal fan wheel with a D-shaft and set screw, which takes a 1 8 inch Allen wrench. The set screw is really tight, but only needs to be loosened just enough to slide the wheel off the shaft. Blech. No wonder it made the burning smell. Brush and APC to the rescue again. I have a bad feeling the motor is going out, but the sheer volume of crud on the fan is doing no favors to balance or airflow. Likewise, this gets a spray bottle rinse at the end. Much better. Four quarter inch screws hold the side panel on the heater. A little stiff and rusty, but not so bad I have to break out the impact driver. The whole thing gets a careful clean with the damp brush. There's a one-time thermal fuse, but no auto-reset snap disc thermal limit. Once this thing overheats, it's game over. Many heaters have a snap disc as a first line of defense. The auto-reset allows for degraded operation, but prevents complete failure in case of poor airflow or very hot ambient, such as a heater getting accidentally left on while running in a closed room. The thermal fuse serves as a one-time backup in case the snap disc welds in the on position and fails to cut power. By the time the fuse opens, the heater is likely trashed. Each motor gets a careful drop of oil on each bearing. Getting the angle was tricky, and I can't as easily unoil the motors for a retake. 
Daylight has deserted me. Curse you, Winter. So I fire up the floodlight and continue. Bulb cover and faceplate get a wash and rinse as well. Now for reassembly of the heater. And the fan. Goes together much more smoothly than disassembly. Then I head back inside to put it all together. The chassis gets a quick wipe down while I'm in there. Hasn't been this clean in over a decade. I put the flathead screws back in for the heater, leaving them a few turns loose. Then I hook and clip the heater in place before tightening the screws to lock it down. Next I slot in the tabs for the fan and clip it in place before securing with the quarter inch screw. Turn breaker back on now that the dangerous part is over. Plug in and test fan. Seems okay. Now for the heater. Okay, still runs rough. Motor is definitely on the way out, but at least it won't catch fire now. Plug in the light reflector and leave it hanging as before. Then slide the faceplate over the top. Secure it with the quarter inch nut to the stud. Then the 3 8 bolt. They should be snug, but use care, as overdoing it could deform or crack the faceplate. Throw in an 800 lumen LED bulb while I'm in there. Make sure it works. Then button it up with a bulb cover. Finally, to tackle that switch, which I really don't trust now. Break her off once again and unscrew the faceplate. Unscrew switch, and carefully extract it from the box. The paint stuck it in place, so I had to pry. Ugh, back wire. Fast to connect, but poor contact area and increased risk of failure, especially in high current applications. The breaker is off, but confirm there is no voltage before touching any wires. Measure voltage with a meter. A non-contact tester can suggest the presence of voltage, but should never be used to confirm its absence. Make note of which wires are connected where before removing them. Red, black, white. Two of the terminals were jammed, or welded, and I had to cut the wires. The screw terminals on the new switch need the wire stripped back further. Much larger contact area and higher clamping force than the back wire spring clips. With the switch removed, I also see the hot wire has exposed copper from an incorrect wire nut. Gotta take care of that while I'm in here. This house has some goofy stuff going on, and I see 14 gauge wire rated for 15 amps on a circuit with a 20 amp breaker. I'll have to talk to the landlady about that. Connect new switch, running wires back to the same positions. Otherwise, we'll be cursing muscle memory for months when we keep turning on the wrong thing. Unlike the old switch, I actually put the ground wire in its proper place. It's short, which complicates reinstallation, but there's just enough slack. Put switch back in J-Box, making sure to keep it straight and avoid pinching any wires. Tighten screws to keep it in place. Turn on the breaker, and test for proper operation. Everything works, so the new plate goes on. There you have it. This was an exercise in polishing a turd, but the fan looks and works better than before, and the switch no longer gives me anxiety. I'll take that switch apart in a future video to see what went wrong. When the heater does eventually fail, or we get fed up with the noise, replacement modules are available, so that won't condemn the entire fan. As you just saw, it's really easy to change. Thanks for watching, until next time, friends.